Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today we're gonna try and simplify the process of choosing which solder you need to do your rework. So, which type of solder should I buy to do micro soldering on mobile devices? Okay, well, we need to understand a couple different things here before we make our decision on which one we're supposed to get, because who knows, maybe Maybe for some reason at the end of this video, you're not going to want the solder that you have now, or even better yet, you're not going to want the solder that I'm using. Why? Because you, know, you have different preferences, okay? If you go on Google right now and you do 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 and you type in like micro soldering solder or, you know, soldering alloys or something like that, you're going to come up with this big old list. This big old list is going to get really intimidating. You're going to see numbers all over the place. In fact, you're going to see numbers and letters and they're going to be smashed together and you're going to be like, holy crap. We have to do algebra? No, no algebra involved. I'm gonna explain first and foremost what the actual little letters and numbers you see mean, okay? So let's take 6040 as an example. You see this, it's, it's a very, very common soldering alloy, 6040. Now you see it and you see 60 and some letters and 40 and some letters. They can be in either direction. You got the number, right? That is the percentage of the type of metal that's denoted next next to that in the little letters, okay? So you've got percentage of what, percentage of what? And it should equal 100 because, you know, 100% of something can only be made of 100% of something. You can't have 120% of 100% of something. So let's, let's, let's kind of move on to the next one here. That one was pretty simple. So the next fundamental thing here is to understand what a eutectic alloy is versus a non-eutectic alloy, okay? This is very, very important because a eutectic alloy has the exact same melting point as its freezing point. It's a point, okay? It's not a range, which kind of brings us into the next property. Some that are non-eutectic, so a non-eutectic alloy would have a plastic range. What? Okay, so if a eutectic alloy has the same melting and freezing point, then a non-eutectic alloy with a plastic range would have more of a range for melting and freezing. Okay, that makes sense. Things are getting a little, little bit easier here. Um, once we know that, then we can start, and start trying to figure out which alloy we want, okay? Next thing we need to look at is what type of alloy is being used on the board right now? Pretty much everything, as long as you live in America, is going to be lead-free ROHS, okay? They took the lead out. They were freaking out, like, oh my god, all this lead's going to kill everybody, okay? But with that being said, lead-free alloy has a really high melting point, okay? So it would stand to benefit somebody who was reworking the board to use something that was a little bit lower. Now, why would we want to use a solder that has a lower melting point than what's on the board? Well, see, that's where it gets really interesting, and that's where all the that's where these little properties start to come in, and you know, come into a little you know idea of which one you should be getting. Okay, so if lead free is higher, and you want lower, okay, well let's get the lowest one possible. Let's go ahead and get low melt solder and just whoop. Let's do everything at like 150 degrees. Wrong. Don't do that. That'll that's terrible. As soon as the board heats up, you're in a lot of trouble. We want something that's just a little bit lower, okay? Just enough that you can work on the board after you've realloyed something and not have as much fear of disturbing other components. You see, if the alloy you put on there is lower than what's around it, then it should be a lot easier to work on, right? And then we talked about these plastic ranges, okay? So if you pick a solder that has a huge plastic range, then you know, what if you accidentally tap it after you're done? What if, what if that plastic range meets really close with that lead-free solder? Well, then you're getting really close to messing things up, okay? So let's take eutectic, and let's take something that's a little bit lower, okay? And that's probably gonna be the solder that we need. Now, there are a very few solders out there that are just a little bit under that also have a eutectic point, okay? Now, the solder that I have chosen is 6337, okay? 6337 is a very specific composition. Why? Because we know that composition is eutectic, okay? It's got a melting point, 
not a melting range okay so that in itself is amazing you see it you see it when it changes and you know instantly when it stops versus the lead free which definitely has a range to it okay um i really want to demonstrate this on a board here just to kind of show you what's going on first and foremost i need to go ahead and take this thing off and re-alloy it with the other alloy all right Gonna heat this bad boy up. Um, Some important to note here: lead-free ROHS solder has a much, much higher melting point than lead-free 6337. Um, some people are under the misguidance that they need to use the exact same solder as was on there to do their rework. Now, what happens in that regard is that as soon as this component I have is grabbed and pulled up. All the components around it are going to also be wet and able to move. That is not good. One of the reasons we're picking the 6337 is because it has that eutectic point on it, and it's just going to be either melted or it's not going to be melted. Okay? Any of this lead free ROHS stuff is going to have that plastic range or a melting range. Okay? So let's go ahead and. Let's keep this component safe because I don't want to lose that. Put that over there, make sure I didn't lose it. Because you know it's really simple if you don't keep eye contact with your donor components that they just they disappear. So let's go ahead and get our iron. Let's get our flux from our never ending flux here because my YouTube set doesn't get a lot of board work. So this will probably last me until infinity or until it expires. Uh, let's get ourselves some 6337, which is a eutectic lower melting point solder. Okay, it's not by a lot, but it's enough to make a difference. All right, oh man, looks like I got the component next to it a little bit. Oh, dang it. All right, well, you know, that's actually kind of cool because one side is actually going to liquefy before the other side so it'll kind of pronounce the uh what i'm trying to get across here a little bit better okay um we're going to go ahead and get our little component here make sure we don't lose it set that bad boy on there and if you've watched my service tension video you know that once this thing liquefies it's going to grab and it's going to go for that super small surface area and it's going to whoop pull the component back in, okay? So what I want you guys to watch for is the fact that the component that's going on right now is going to melt and liquefy before everything else around it, which, if you think about it, makes things so much easier to do. Like, makes you think, why would I ever use something else? Hmm. I don't think you should, but, you know. Again, Application specific. If you're you, if you're working on something that has to meet certain specifications, then you gotta use what you gotta use. But if you're just doing general board repair, here we go. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably tap some of these like lead-free ones while this one's melted. Okay. So I'm tapping this one, hoping it's gonna move. See that? Now let's see how long it takes. The other one's already done. It's set. But I'm still tapping this other one next to it, trying to get it to melt. Come on, give it to me. The other one's been done here for a while. And now you're starting to see why 6337 with its little eutectic point and its lower melting point I mean, I don't even know. It's just not, I mean, this one's, look at that. Still melted, still liquid, this one nothing. This is a smaller, lower, ma it's a lower mass component. It should have been, what's wrong? Oh wait, 
We chose the correct solder. How about that? Anyway, I hope that a lot of this is really self-explanatory. I know that sometimes I over-explain things, but I do it because I want you to understand, and I want you to see, okay? You can see right here that I'm sitting here tapping this component that's got like half of the mass, half of the mass of the component I'm putting on, yet the bigger component melted, surface tensioned itself into place. I mean, self-explanatory. I hope you learned something today. I really, really do. I, I hope you took something away from this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. That way, every time I put something up, whether you're just on your phone in the bathroom or you know at the office, you're going to see it. It's going to pop up. It's going to say, hey, Justin from the Art of Repair has put out a new video. Go ahead and click right here and watch it. All right? I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget, guys, if you're interested in any of the tools I use, check out the description below. I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.